So I've had a number of people reach out to me asking about um, how I'm making the better maker EQ, compressor, and limiter work in my workflow. And um, I'm still using Reaper for the analog processing, and I finish projects in WaveLab. But uh, the reason I'm still using Reaper is because of a script that I had made that sort of overcomes a weakness of the design of the Better Maker plugins. And my opinion is that the Better Maker plugins were designed more from a mix engineer standpoint, where you have one song per session, and maybe you you know have the EQ or limiter compressor on the stereo bus of that song. So when you um, obviously when you close that song and open a different one, the settings will change, and that's great. You can digitally store the settings and the plugin will talk to the hardware and it uh, basically digital recall for analog gear. It's great. But what maybe what they didn't think about is mastering sessions where we have all the songs in one session and most, if not all mastering DAWs have what's called object effects or item effects, clip effects as WaveLab calls them. And this allows us to have just one or two tracks in the mastering session but um, we can put our plugins right on each song. It's called, in Reaper, they call it item effects. So there you can see my 12 songs of this album lined up, ready to go, all on one track, which makes for a nice clean session. And then each song has its own plugin chain. And, you know, I have a few plugins that are inserted before going analog. And then, of course, each song has its own Better Maker set of plugins for the EQ, compressor, limiter. Um, and what's cool about that is, each, again, each song will have its own specific settings. So watch what happens when I skip from song one. I can skip to song two, three. Maybe I'll play some audio so it looks better. Song four. So I'm skipping really quickly with shortcuts to each song. And this allows me to, you know, dial in the settings for each song without committing. So I can skip to the third chorus of song one and then the third chorus of song two and really just kind of fine tune things without committing. In the old days, we would maybe um, dial in one song, capture it back to digital, then dial in the next song, capture it back to digital. And then by the time you get to the eighth song, you listen back to the first song and maybe you realize you wanted that one a little brighter. So you got to redo that. It's a really slow way of working. I really like this method because I can jump around from song to song and the settings change um, without having to do any automation or snapshots or presets. All I'm doing is moving my cursor around the session and um, the gear knows to change. And the reason this is possible is because Reaper has a cool feature for plugins called Offline and it's better than Bypass. Um, it's better than, it's basically like deleting the plugin from the session entirely except for the settings remain so you can tell a plugin to go offline which means it it's not taxing the cpu it's essentially deleted but when you put it online your settings are just how you left them so with this reaper script what we're doing is the whatever item which is a song and mastering is closest to the playback cursor that's the only one with online Better Maker plugins, the rest of them are programmed to go offline. And this way the hardware doesn't get confused because if you do this in any other program, the hardware is going to see multiple instances of the plugin and get confused and basically do nothing. So we're sort of tricking the hardware by programming the um, plugins to go offline except the one that's closest to the cursor. Now, of course, this doesn't work if you have overlapping songs because there can only be one um, active plugin, but I take care of all the song overlaps in WaveLab in the montage. So when I'm doing this part of my workflow, I don't have anything overlapping on purpose because that causes a, lot, a number of problems. Um, so for right now, everything's spaced out with a, enough time in between each song to switch. Um, so once I get all the songs dialed in, I can actually just play this session from start to end and record it back in to digital and I can go do something else. I can take a little break, um, get some fresh air. And that's also in part because I have this Crookwood insert switcher that can be programmed with MIDI. So all my per song changes happen with, you know, the Crookwood for changing the order of gear or taking gear in and out. And then the 
better maker I've been leaning on quite a bit more because it's really easy to program EQ changes per song, compression changes per song, limiter changes per song. You know, I can take um, certain pieces out of the, you know, you can see some of them are going into disengaged mode, you know, which I could do here or on the Crookwood, but um, just a really cool workflow. And I thought it'd be easier to show it in a video than explain what's happening. But again, it's only possible because of this script, which I don't know how to make it. I just know a guy, I give him crazy ideas and he turns it into reality. So if you are wanting to work this way, you may have to write to Better Maker and see if they can improve their plugins. Um, WaveLab, I thought it was going to work in WaveLab. And again, it's not WaveLab's fault, but WaveLab does have a mode for plugins called Dynamic or DYN if you look at the preferences of WaveLab. And this was really designed for UAD plugins because let's say you have a 10 song album and you want to put a couple plugins on each song, well, that's probably going to easily overload your um, UAD card. But with dynamic mode, only the songs, or clips as WaveLab calls them, only the clips that are playing or being rendered, of course, um, will tax the UAD DSP. So that allows you to have, you could have a 30-song project, and you wouldn't max out your UAD card because only the clips that need it for playing or processing are going to tax it. So it's a similar concept. I was hoping that the Better Maker plugins would respond to that, but they don't. So I don't know if that's a WaveLab enhancement or a Better Maker fix, but you know, Better Maker is supposedly trying to solve this with um, snapshots and automation and presets and things like that, which I don't really see exactly how that's going to work. But to me, that's going to be too much... Um, messing around you know too much drawing of automation where for this i don't have to draw any automation i just literally you know the script is always running in the background when i start reaper and then as i skip from song to song as you can see here the number is changing um, just using the numeric keypad to skip between songs but it's so fast smooth um, never screws up um, and i really hope that other people using this better maker stuff for mastering can soon enjoy the same experience so thanks for watching hopefully that clears up some questions and i won't have to keep typing the same email over and over um, and have a good day